Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Studio Sundays with me, Steph. Today I'm going to be working on one of my ink drawings. I work a lot in chance, I've actually got a video which I'll link below on my abstract art and this is kind of one of the final stages where I'm kind of going around and I'm picking out some of the areas and drawing those out. I've never done one this big so this has actually been quite a challenge and I think a lot of the time when I'm doing a piece it kind of like it looks good well I think it looks good and then I carry on working and I carry on working and I carry on working and I'm making all this texture and then it gets to a point where I'm like oh my god there's just too much and I can't make any sense of it so right now I'm in quite a difficult part of the painting a lot of people think that when you like do an art it's always like this like relaxing thing it's it, it cannot it's not always a relaxing process and it can be quite stressful so I thought what I'd do is film a video while I'm all stressed out doing this and just tell you what I've been up to this week so if you haven't already go and grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee not judging on either side today I'm having tea so if you want to come and join me with a tea that's great if you want to join me with a coffee no judgment Ooh. Mm -hmm. that's a good cuppa so go and pause the video if you've not got one go get yourself a cuppa and come and join me so I decided that I'm going to use my nibs to do the outlining on this rather than just using a pen I thought it'd be quite fun to use my calligraphy nibs and I'm using FW um, gold ink let's just see what the actual name of this one is let's see Mazum gold so it's yeah it's a really beautiful color I've also got a gold Posca pen I've got one of the gold pilot pens that I've mentioned and a white Posca pen as well so I'm going to be incorporating that and then also some pink too so what I've been finding with this is that sometimes the ink doesn't flow and I think it is just because I've got so much watercolor on the page also in my palette video I was talking about how I don't like to use the watercolor in the tubes these so these are De La Rowney artist quality in tubes but to be honest with this because it's such a big piece and I want like full coverage they've actually been ideal so I am finding uses for them and then what I'm doing is I'm literally just filling the nib with ink oh that just made a big ink splot so that's quite fun as well with this it's oh, I think I'm gonna have to change that nib what else is quite fun with this is like when I do make a mistake like if I do drop paint or something like that it's not a huge deal I'm changing the nib here just because it's getting a little clogged where are my nibs where are my nibs where are my nibs where the hell are my nibs no ah, there. so I've been using a thin nib I think I need to go for something a little bigger I also bought a kit of really super fine nibs and I'm finding them a little bit difficult to use to be honest I don't know whether I'm doing something wrong I'm gonna try let's have a go with one of them so they sent me the pen nibs they're actually like it feels beautiful these little like handles so last week was a little bit crazy for me jackson bless his heart he's teething so he's not really been sleeping and red was on early shifts as well so oh it was just it was just very very difficult it was very very difficult last week i ended up having like a bit of a meltdown and crying it was just like such a weird week but to be honest i did kind of make a lot of progress in terms of like i didn't just sit there and just let my mood fester i was like right what can i do to bring myself out of this like weird dark place that i'm going into because it wasn't really like a, i shouldn't really say dark place it wasn't really a dark place that i was going into it was more the fact that i was just really sleep deprived and really tired and i was kind of like having a bit of a freak out to do with like my uni i think a lot of the time with uni I always feel like I'm on the verge of doing something good like I'm on the verge of doing something great but 
it's that whole thing of like self-doubt being like oh god is this like even like is this even good and then you get yourself into like a weird tizzy like with your artwork so yeah let's talk about last week so the start of the week I was so tired, like so tired. It was like crazy. But me and Reb are like, right, okay, let's just like crack on and like, let's go for a walk. Let's do things that like make us feel positive. So we went to this place in oh, this really beautiful walk. It was so fab. And there was like this old orangery and we just like walked around. It was just the two of us. Someone took Jackson for an afternoon and oh, it was just so lovely. And then I decided I was gonna start baking. Now, if anybody, whoever, <laughs> everybody who knows me, baking is not my strong suit. I am not that great of a baker. I can cook, I'm a good cook, but baking is like science. It's like science, there's measuring, there's chemicals, there's reactions, there's heat. There's a lot of elements, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong very quick. And my history with baking has not been that fab. So I was like, right, I really wanna be like that mom that can like make like a beautiful biscuit for the child and be like, come on, let's do some baking. Let's do some decorating. Let's do this, let's do that. And it go like, not like, you know, professional level, but just okay. So I was like, right, okay, this week we're gonna make biscuits. And I made shortbread biscuits because like that's what we've been eating. And I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And they actually turned out okay. I think the key, now this is like really serious for anyone thinking about getting into baking. The key to success is follow the instructions. Follow the <laughs> instructions. Don't don't try and make up your own instructions like you can do with cook cooking because you know what, it's not gonna go well. And I think that has been my downfall in the past. That has been my massive downfall. <laughs> so I made these biscuits, they turned out fab and I was like, right, I don't have any cookie cutters so I'm gonna use a glass. I just made like these giant circles. And I bought some um, some cake decorating stuff when I went to the big shop. You know, there's like little tubes. So we just did white backgrounds and then me and Red like sat and we decorated our cookies and they actually turned out really well and they were super, super tasty. I was made up. So I was like, okay. So next step, next step, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy some piping nozzles and I'm gonna get some stuff and I'm gonna try and make a cake. So I made this cake and I made it with a buttercream icing and I bought these like colors on Amazon. It was 18 food colors for like nine pounds. I was like, you know what? Let's just go mad. Let's just do it. Let's get it. So <laughs> I decided to make this cake with the most garish colors that I could think of. It looked like something that like a My Little Pony had just pooped out and just threw at you. Like that's basically what it looked like. I made a confetti cake. I was like, I'm gonna make this confetti cake. It's gonna be sick. And I did like a blue, like icing all over the cake. And then I piped purple and pink little like nodule things on it. Oh my God, it was amazing. And I did like a green outline as well. Like it was crazy. And then I covered it in confetti sprinkles and I put confetti sprinkles inside the cake too. And it turned out really well. Like I am shocked at how well it turned out. The next time I do it, I'm gonna try and make it a bit bigger because I did it two layers and it was about, maybe about this deep. I wanna do like one of these big cakes. I wanna make a big ass cake. So that is gonna be another video. I'll maybe do like a cake decorating video because like it's something that I'm enjoying doing and it's something that's like bringing me pleasure. And I think this all boils down to just wanting to do a tea party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I need to do a tea party. I need to have a tea party. So I need to get good at making beautiful cakes, lovely biscuits. Sandwiches got them down. I've got them down, but I need to get the cake and the bickies down because I want to make like a beautiful lavish tea party to celebrate when we're all out of lockdown and then we can all hang out. I just think it's going to be beautiful. And my great, my great Nana Sarah has had this beautiful tea set. It's white and it has um, gold roses on it. I know that I'm more into like the mid-century modern kind of stuff, but I quite like the simplicity of these. And it doesn't have a teapot. So my mum was like, you can have this like one day if you want. And I was like, oh my God, that would actually be amazing. So I was scouring on eBay and I found a teapot 
that it's not it's not the same but it kind of goes like it's a white teapot with a gold nodule at the top and it has like a very simple gold flower design at the top as well I won't know exactly what it looks like 100% until it gets here, but it was only £12 on eBay. I think it was 18 with the postage. So that, fingers crossed, is coming next week. So I'm very, very excited about it. I might try to see if she lets me take just a teacup and a saucer so I can have just like my own little high tea on me bill just while it's like, you know, locked down. We also went for another walk with Jackson and we went and got some croissants and some coffee and we went and sat in the park and ate our croissants. It was so nice. We just like walked around and so I've been doing like a lot of like well-being stuff like last week. I haven't really been writing in my journal so like I did that too. And I really actually focused last week on writing. So Thursday I was just writing all day in uni what we have to do is we keep two different types of journals we keep a contextual journal which is everything that you see of interest and you put it in there and then you have a personal journal which is all about your practice and the stuff that you work on so like say for instance like this painting that i'm doing now i'll write about that in my personal journal but say for instance um okay like john ruskin like i'm really interested in sort of john ruskin and the pre-raphaelites that's not really anything to do with my personal practice, so I'd stick that in my contextual journal. And I think people get a bit confused as well with like the personal, like this year, I, I didn't realize if you were doing a commission, but it didn't reference to your studio practice. You can still put that in your personal journal, didn't know that. I think uni has been such a confusing experience. Like it really, really has. You get to like third year and then everything seems to make sense. Like everything seems to just go bing, click, I get it now. And I kind of wish what they would have done is maybe give, like have some kind of like mentor system, like maybe in first year where you have a sit down in one of the third years and they kind of go through it in their own experience. That I think would have been really, really beneficial. Anytime that I can speak to a first year, if I see a first year struggling, I'm just like, hey, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You might not know what you're doing right now, but you will and it's all fine like even now like I feel like I don't know what I'm doing I feel like I'm really at a lost point with everything that I'm doing I've been doing a lot of resin work and they've all been failing and I think it's got a lot to do with like the place that I can do the resin because resin's quite a tricky medium to work with in terms of like curing and the temperature has to be right the only place that I can do that right now is in my garage and it's so cold out there that it's just not setting and it's so expensive as well. So it's it's been quite it's been quite upsetting really to be honest with you. And I think that kind of might have well that definitely set off one of my meltdowns was going out and all of the test pieces that I'd done have failed. And I cut up one of my paintings to kind of put into these pieces to kind of make these sort of uncanny sort of like natural nature like handmade nature that's the kind of like thing that i was going for and it just it just failed and it was so heart-wrenching and it was so kind of like it be, it kind of just makes you feel like what's the point in me doing this like why am i even doing this and i think a lot of people feel that way where it's like what's the point in me doing this but the whole point is it's a learning process and you shouldn't feel like you know exactly like what's going on like right now the piece that i'm working on here so what i'm doing is i'm actually working with signal magic so what you do is you create a symbol that means something you don't tell anyone what it means and then you destroy it the traditional thing is to burn it but what i'm doing is i'm actually destroying it with paint so i'm hiding the symbol within the artwork and then eventually you just forget the symbol so it's the symbol is a huge it's it's the whole page but you can't see it you don't know only i know the meaning of it so i quite like that this has actually come out like quite like under the sea kind of vibes which i'm really loving there's a lot of like organic feeling to this painting and it's quite energetic and i think the more i add the texture with the line drawings that i'm doing onto it it's gonna look better it is slowly coming together and i'm slowly feeling happy with it but there was a point where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I really don't know what I'm doing. And I think that's that's something that you've really got to battle with. And it's like an inner battle as an artist where you shouldn't like what you're doing. You shouldn't be like happy when you're painting and know exactly where it's going. There should be a struggle when you're doing something good. Because it's like, 
you learn from it how you're gonna learn from something that if it's not a struggle do you know what i mean but yeah enough about that so i thought i'd just crack on have a little chat with you guys so i've also been playing a lot of animal crossing oh i am just like in such a comfy cozy place in my life that like all i want is to just be comfy cozy sit in my imaginary cottage with my imaginary villagers and just just have a nice little life and go to the shop and buy an outfit from the able sisters that's what i want to do that's what i want to do with my life that's all i want to do sit there with jackson he sits on my knee and he absolutely loves it when isabel opens up and she does like a little announcement he loves isabel it's so cute like he'll sit there and he'll be like on my knee like he'll be like playing with his dummy on like playing with like a little like he'll have like a toy and he'll be sat there and then one of the villagers starts talking and he'll go from like this to like and he just loves to sit and watch them it's adorable and he is nearly crawling he is almost there with the crawl and he kind of like he he's like planking like he goes up on his like hands and like his like little toes and he's like and then he like falls to the side it's so cute it's so 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 cute we're still on postman pat we're still heavily heavily a postman pat household every five minutes that man is on my television and i think we are gonna have a postman pat themed birthday party i think that's what we are gonna do we saw on smithies they do a postman pat costume for one to two years so i'm hoping it's not gonna be huge but we are gonna get it for him because i think that would be so cute he could literally be like a little postman pat and we've been finding like loads of like vintage postman pat stuff as well on ebay somebody's selling bookends and a clock and a stuffed dress so i'm hoping if it doesn't go too expensive i might win it my whole life is like just looking on ebay so i can't go to the charity shops i can't hoard through people's stuff anymore that's it I'm like, I'm like i don't know where to go where am i going i don't know i don't know oh my gosh it's crazy i'm actually kind of getting starting to get used to these pens a little bit it is a bit confusing though they are um a little strange but i think if i was using them on like paper like that hasn't been you know treated with things that it'd be a bit of an easier job but hey ho let's go because i was using my fine liners when i was doing the smaller pieces and i was feeling like i was ruining the fiber tips and girl you don't want to ruin your tips no 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 so i thought right let's go pen and ink i've been doing a lot of pen and ink i've been starting to write in my journal actually with the calligraphy pens and it just makes everything feel like so much more special i absolutely love my calligraphy pens another thing that we've been doing we've been watching buffy the vampire slayer <gasps> Oh, this is before I knew all the stuff with Josh Whedon, uh, Whedon, 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 I don't have to say that word, Whedon, so anyway, Josh Whedon, we've been watching Buffy and all that stuff with him come out with being like, you know, an abuser, and that upsets me so much, where I'm like, oh, found out today about him, I've been in my own little like echo chamber of like not knowing what's going on in the world. And it's so sad it's so so sad but i'm still gonna watch it because at the end of the day if you're not watching it then it's kind of like insulting to the entire cast that were in there who you know went through this terrible trauma and a lot of the people they don't regret being in buffy they just obviously don't want to be referenced to him and that's what sarah michelle geller said she was like something something on the lines of like you know i'm very proud to be in buffy but i don't want to be like you know reminded of like josh whedon's whedon um existence <laughs> that is me paraphrasing go and look up the quote i don't know what she said exactly that is a very big power pa i am paraphrase so let's talk a little bit about buffy oh, oh my god it's so good it's so amazing i completely forgot about how good buffy was and when it was on telly like i kind of like dip in and out and i never really like fully sat and watched like every single like episode that like, i wasn't like fully dedicated to it oh i wish i wish i had been fully dedicated to it when it was out oh my days it's so good it's so brilliant like 
her whole vibe i just love it i remember when i if anyone remembers woolies i went to woolies and i got the buffy the vampire slayer journal it was purple and it was like a velvet and it had an embroidered b on the front and it had like all these sections on like the inside like how many vamp vampires did you kill today it was the coolest journal we managed to find it online it's so expensive oh my gosh it was going for something crazy like one of them was going for like 90 pounds another one was on for 50 and it had like loads of watches and i was like i can't i can't do this i can't i can't spend between 50 to 90 pounds on a journal because i had one when i was 10 like i can't actually i think i might have been a little older but there was a whole range i remember going in woolies and I, it sounds silly i remember the aisle i remember like going to the aisle and it was like when you first go into like the woolies where i'm from obviously it's not there anymore you kind of go in and it was kind of like a rectangular shape but then there was like a weird little square like off to the right and there was like two aisles and it was in the first aisle and that whole aisle just had all of the buffy stuff and the only thing that i could afford was the journal i think a lot of the times i'd just go to woolies and i'd just buy stationery and i'd buy like journals and turn them into like little scrapbooks and write all my teen feelings down but oh that buffy journal i don't know what the hell happened to it like most of my teen journals i think i probably destroyed them i think a lot of the time i was so frightened if somebody found the content of my journal and i used to destroy them please though if you are like a young person watching this don't destroy your words even if you're embarrassed by them like i've started to like not destroy anything from like i've got one of my journals from when i'm 15 and like i've got some other journals like when i was like in my early 20s i got quite depressed and i do a lot of writing and when i look back at some of the things that like i was writing it does make me very sad but at the same time i don't want to get rid of it because that's a documentation of like who i was i'm not that person anymore that person doesn't exist the only place that they exist is still in those pages so it's like a little time capsule that you know you can kind of revisit that person that you were so i wish i hadn't like got rid of these journals i had one journal oh my god i remember it so vividly it was when i was 14 and it was like this notebook and it had like a sort of like a smarties kind of like pattern on the outside and it was like ring bound and the first page was just a collage and it had like gwen stefani and like loads of people like a bun dutch hat and all that kind of stuff and then i had like loads of things in there where like i take it to school with me and i'd be constantly like writing in it and i had like loads of things about like reading palms and witchcraft and i had like loads of things and i like they're like the main pages that i remember i remember like one page it was like what kind of eyes like indicate your spirit animal and i was like i'm a wolf i have wolf eyes <laughs> I like i was like so and so i remember like a miss magazine if anyone used to buy miss magazine they had like the witch pages oh my god me and my friends were so into witchcraft it was so funny i remember my friend becky if she's watching this she will remember this well i hope she remembers this it was one halloween there must have been about 10 of us and we'd all been like walking around and it was freezing it was so freezing i think it was halloween or it was around halloween and becky used to live by the park and her garage had like this like lean to like with a covered garage and we were all sat and we had like a candle and we we're all like holding hands and we decided that we we're like gonna like perform like a spell we are the weirdos mister and it was like one of like parts of the spell was like you know cut your hand and like put it in like the cup but none of us wanted to do it so we all like we all like spat in this cup and we all drank it and it's like why did we do that <laughs> why did we do that i think we had like ribena because we couldn't have wine because we were like 14 and we we're like spitting in this cup and just thinking that like that's what we needed to do to be witches which oh my god like the it's like it's a gross memory but it's one of my happiest memories <laughs> honestly oh the thought the thought of it but i do practice witchcraft i do i'm i'm, I'm always learning by it. it's very difficult there's a lot of different paths that you can go down the beauty of it is is that you decide what you're going to practice and you, you choose and you pick what you want and what you're going to do so like, i'm really into like tarot i like doing like ritual baths all that kind of stuff so if anybody wants me to talk about that i mean i probably am going to talk about that at some point i mean this 
is basically um practicing witchcraft here and also i think people think like if you're if you practice witchcraft you can't practice the religion that you're in at the moment and that's not true you can be any religion and practice witchcraft it's not evil it's not satanic worship it's all i think a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about witchcraft and what it actually is i was brought up a catholic and i remember going to my nan's church and it was halloween they were having a halloween party and there was a letter in the newsletter you weren't allowed to dress up as a witch or a werewolf or anything like they would class as demonic i just think that's crazy I just, I just really think it's crazy i mean really should i think it's crazy it's like you know the catholic religion but you know i just think that's you know it's, it's a witchcraft isn't evil but yeah i think that's another thing with like watching buffy it's like really like made me kind of go ha ha with all the witchcraft oh my god i love it but yeah this video i've been just waffling on about nothing but yeah that's what i've been up to this week that's what i've been up to that's what i've been getting down I hope that everybody's staying safe and let me know in the comments down below about the points that i've said if you want me to talk about some witchcraft we could do some witchcraft videos if anyone wants to do any collabs let me know it'd be that fun but yeah i love you guys go and have another cup of tea and have some bickies as well i'm gonna go decorate some bickies this afternoon love you guys bye